For 11 years, international investors have shared in the successes of the discoveries by Ivanhoe Mines. And the rapid development of one of the world's great mining complexes in Mongolia's Great Gobi Desert. Now we are counting down to the start this year of initial production at OU Tolgoi. For a thousand years or more, the goats, sheep and camels of traditional nomadic herder families grazed around the rocky outcrops at Oyu Tolgoi, which earned the name Turquoise Hill from its ancient rocks showing patches of oxidized copper. The rock formations intrigued modern geologists. Then, in the late 1990s, the drillers were called in. The potential of huge mineral wealth in southern Mongolia, right at China's doorstep, was a tantalizing prospect. Ivanhoe Mines took over the search 12 years ago, after global miner BHP lost interest. Ivanhoe won the support of investors as it pursued the shared dream of finding a world-scale deposit and building a mine in the ancient heart of Asia. In 2001, Ivanhoe drilled deep and made the first big discovery at Oyu Tolgoi. This was quickly followed by even more significant discoveries. Today, the original hill at the site of Ivanhoe's initial discovery at Oyu Tolgoi has been transformed. A fleet of mammoth trucks is hauling away rock, 290 tons at a time, to expose the underlying deposit of gold-rich ore that also contains large amounts of copper and silver. The Open Pit Mine will begin supplying ore this year for the start of production of concentrate from the first phase of OU Tolgoi's development, which is expected during the third quarter. During the past two years, an army of almost 15,000 workers has been employed on what is the largest construction project in Mongolia's history. Today, there are bus stops at Oyu Tolgoi, in the middle of the Gobi Desert. Progress on the first phase of the Oyu Tolgoi mining and processing complex was nearly 75% complete as of February this year. Ore from the open pit will be put through the adjacent primary crusher to reduce the size of the rock. An overland conveyor will transfer the crushed ore 2.4 kilometers or 1.5 miles from the primary crusher to the coarse ore storage building, a vast domed structure that is one of the new Gobi landmarks at Oyu Tolgoi. The 13-story tall pebble crusher will further reduce oversized ore for processing. Inside the state-of-the-art concentrator complex, ore will be fed into the large semi-autogenous grinding mills and ball mills to further break apart the ore into a slurry before it's fed into tanks in the flotation circuit where the concentrate containing the copper, gold, silver and molybdenum will be produced. After start-up this year, full commercial-scale production is set to follow in 2013. During its initial years of operation, the concentrator plant will process 100,000 tons of ore a day. OU Tolgoi is projected to produce an average of 1.2 billion pounds of copper, or 544,000 tons, and 650,000 ounces of gold every year for the first 10 years. Silver production is expected to average more than 3 million ounces each year during the first 10 years. Revenues from silver and other byproduct minerals such as molybdenum will considerably lower OU Tolgoi's average cash cost to produce a pound of copper or an ounce of gold. Phase 2 of the development will see the addition of ore produced from the copper-rich Hugo Dummett underground deposit beginning in 2015. The construction of access to the vast Hugo deposit has been underway for more than seven years. The sinking of shaft number one to a depth of more than 1,300 meters was completed in 2008. During the ensuing four years of underground development work to early 2012, more than 10 kilometers or well over six miles of access tunnels were built. Another 32 kilometers or 20 miles of tunnels are scheduled to be completed before underground production begins in 2015. 
Shaft number two will be 10 meters in diameter. It'll be the first of two initial production shafts that will deliver ore to the surface from the underground block cave mine at Hugo North. The head frame over shaft number two will tower 31 stories above the Gobi. Underground mining will use block caving techniques in which the ore body will be undercut from below and progressively collapsed as ore is withdrawn and hauled to the surface for processing. Underground ore will boost throughput at the concentrator to up to approximately 160,000 tonnes per day. Other future stages of development, based on the resources discovered to date, remain to be planned. Ivanhoe's ongoing exploration has identified a 23-kilometre-long series of copper, gold and silver deposits that now ranks as one of the largest finds in mining history. A development study by independent consultants has projected that the resources already established at OU Tolgoi would support production for approximately 60 years. With exploration drilling still expanding, the current deposits and testing new targets, mining experts agree that OU Tolgoi could sustain production for well over 100 years. The minerals at OU Tolgoi are part of Mongolia's resources heritage. The Mongolian government's acquisition of a 34% interest in OU Tolgoi was confirmation of the project's strategic significance. In a major commitment to helping Mongolia create sustainable jobs and communities, the project is investing $85 million in training and education, including technical and vocational training for up to 3,300 men and women. Scholarships are being provided to 200 students at Mongolian and international universities each year. OU Tolgoi is a nation-building economic endowment for future generations of Mongolians. Mongolia is gaining broad international recognition as one of the world's great untapped mineral storehouses. OU Tolgoi firmly on track to become one of the world's largest copper, gold and silver producers, is helping to redefine the nation's dreams and destiny.